we're here. It's gonna be an epic tour of Republic National Distributing Company's Ashland, Virginia warehouse. It's massive. This may be like a two, three hour show. Regardless, you're gonna need to watch. We're rocking! We're rocking over here! We're gonna wait till we're done with this because it looks like shit. <laughs> Republic National Distributing Company, rare treat today. Thanks to perennial special guest, Holly Rocco Paracci of Bazzelli's Wine TV for somehow upping the ante again. This is gonna be an awesome show. Like, smash that button. You know what you gotta do. Thank you. All right, Virginia, this is the only um, branch in the, in the RNDC network that is wine only. All other branches are wine and spirits. So um, this is unique. We do um, 4 million cases approximately every year. Our building was built in 2015, and um, it's 305,000 square feet with a little bit under uh, 250,000 in the warehouse. Okay. We have about 30,000 in the office area and approximately 20,000 in point of sale with um, Virginia also, we have a brokerage here for the spirit side, and they're also co-located in this, in this facility. Okay, this is where it all happens, guys. Come right in. Wow. This is the land of wine. Some people say Italy's the land of wine. I think this is the <laughs> land of wine. Uh, right now we have uh, in excess of 625,000 cases of wine. Um, as I said before, we do 4 million cases a year, and that's, it varies between 9,000 cases to 25,000 cases per night. With bottles, we're doing anywhere from 10,000 bottles to 24,000 bottles per night. 10,000 bottles a night is being processed? As, as each is. Okay. Uh, which is, hey John, which is, um, some of our branches are, um, we used to be a heavy bottle branch. Now, compared to Michigan, which does over 100,000 bottles uh, a day, we're, we're small potatoes comparatively. Not too shabby, though. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> all right. I know this box. Yeah. <laughs> I know this box very well, thanks to Holly. <laughs> um, the way we process orders is our salespeople go out during the day and they turn in orders or we have some customers that turn in their own orders via either EDI or they will fax, fax in orders be processed by our customer service department. Uh, so several ways orders actually will come into the system. Um, right now our cutoff is at 5 p.m. So that at 5 p.m. we say, okay, that's enough, that's enough for orders for the day. And then we'll process the orders. By doing that, our router actually decides um, which trucks go out and what stops actually go with those trucks. At that point, they get waves. We're using a, a Shiraz system, which is a DMWNH sortation and control system. Um, and then the is that rubber. That's software? That's software, and uh, they also controllers for the conveyor systems. Understood. So for the bottles, this is where the rubber meets, meets the road here. We have a uh, box maker on this side, which has the automatic labeler for our higher volume line. On this side is a manual box maker, which also uh, makes boxes and you manually put the labels on by hand. So you have about 80% of the bottles going through that side, and then 20% obviously on the other side. We have two levels. Um, the upstairs is a combination of a little bit of flow rack, shorter, and static rack, so slower, slower volume products. We can uh, fit actually 100% of our SKUs in the bottle room. Now, everything's not um, picked by a bottle. We don't pick um, large formats by the bottle, so everything's that need to be in So this is the bottle room? This is where the, the bottle Where room. the sorting happens? Yes. Okay, and that's all done manually? Uh, bottles are picked manually. Bottles are still picked manually. Nice. Okay. Uh, you know, it's um, something we look at periodically, trying to automate some of this, but it's uh, 
incredibly difficult to actually get a robot to pull bottles of all different shapes and sizes. It's just really, really difficult to, d to well, do. Shipping boxes are different shapes and sizes as well. And yes. Different weights, everything, you know, everything, everything is so Some yeah. bottles weigh more than others. Yeah, yes, if, if you go in and just look at the differences, you can imagine a robot pulling this and being able to do that without pulling foil off. You know, and then, you know, then you have everything from large format, a, a shape like that, you know, and everything's just, just so different. Wow. Wow. But this is a, uh, um, qu quite a, quite a long line. So the bottle lines are the longest line. We have, we take a, the, as you finish with a box, you toss it up here, the conveyor takes it to a compactor where we recycle all the uh, corrugated. Richard, in, on a busy night, how many people are working in here? Uh, typically we're running about six people, but you can run, you can run more or less. It depends on bottle volume. So you just toss the box up there? Yep, and it takes it away. Just takes it away. Yeah. Okay. Empty. All right. Is it, you said, and so this is, the, the peak period is when? Um, it's actually by day. The peak by periods day. T tend to be on, um, for, for cases, it's on Monday nights. And then for um, bottles and for stops, it's uh, Thursday. And Friday also is heavy. When um, everyone's out drinking. Yeah, so, so, so Sunday, yeah. Sunday night and uh, Tuesday night are your lightest nights. Yeah, at casewinelife.com, we see that Sundays are a big day when people order wine by the case. Um, and Holly, of course, is our expert rep. Yes, yeah, so I um, large orders on Sundays. You get, you get our orders on, on, on Sundays. Very cool. And the, but what we love about RNDC or Public National Drinking Company is the broad portfolio of the book. They've got everything. They've got an awesome Italian book. You know, I'm partial to Italian wines. Of course, they've got the Cali calves that everyone loves. Um, can we just walk the line? Absolutely. Because you have such great skews. I mean, you've got Vino from uh, with House of Smith. Uh, cupcake here. Uh, chime right in, Holly. Uh, uh, gnarly head. Uh, oh, Phantom. You got to love Phantom. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Butter Shard, Famous Shard, Rafino, Reserva Ducali, shout out to Christy Atwood of Constellation. Shout out to Christy. Yeah, shout out to Christy, we, lo we love them. King Palm, this looks interesting, I haven't seen this. Um, Cabernet from Paso, okay, there you go. That surprise, be, surprise. That might be a virtual label. Some of that might be private label, okay. Jay Lore. Jay Lore, uh, the pure proprietary blend is really hot right now. Um, like the, just, just their book is amazing, guys. I mean, to, to have so much on, 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 in one house is, is not easy. It's 7,000 uh, 7, SKUs. 7,000 SKUs. And on uh, and the lower level here, this is the, the, the majority of the volume. It's the fastest moving items. That's what my, mom, that's what my mom calls me. Yeah, I was going to say, that's you. Uh, that's, that's, why <laughs> that's you. did I not sell this? I okay. Don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, wow, wow, this is awesome. Oh, we absolutely can. Oh, I'm a kid in a candy store, guys. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. If you're wondering what the technical sticks are, in case a case gets stuck back there. To grab them. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the grabbers. Yeah. Bellagio Chianti. That's the old school flask? Yeah. Traditional. <laughs> Growing up Italian, that's what you see on every table. Yeah, Holly, Holly knows. Yeah. Holly. Barbersville, shout out to the Virginia winemakers. Virginia wine has come a long way. I mean, we're we're probably neck and neck with California. But California won't say that, but I can say. That. But Barbersville is doing a lot Shout for the Virginia to wine. Jason to your, Jason Tassaro. Your Italian pronunciation. Absolutely, Jason has taught me a lot about <laughs> wine. And um, the Zanin family yes. are the owners. They do a lot for Fantastic. wine in the wine industry. Barbersville, big shot to them. And also our friends at um, Williamsburg Winery, yes. Matthew. Matthew and Elena. Yeah, Matthew and Elena are doing a lot for the Virginia wine industry. 
and RDC is doing a lot with them for, for, for our state. GH Mom, Jessica Bonarati, very popular. Tis the season. You don't have, you don't have, what, is, what does Holly say? You don't have to drink champagne, or it doesn't have to be a special occasion to drink champagne. That's right. so. <laughs> special occasion is when you open it. Thank you, thank you. These are kind of new device, relatively new devices in the uh, industry, and it's called a spiravator. And actually, it's, it allows you to take products straight up instead of used to, you had to weave conveyors back and forth. So it's a way to con condense the space. Okay. How many times have you slid down? Uh, yeah, it's, it's actually it's a very, very, very sensitive. If you break one of these and they go in sideways, then you lose a whole bunch of them. Wow. But uh, we have an ingenious uh, mechanic that works here that's actually put in some uh, emergency stops that oh. kind of saves us. Can, can wine. Right, Holly? Yep. Wine and can. I like this. I love this branding. Murph, uh, the, the Chardonnay is very popular. Yeah, yeah. the Chardonnay is um, Yeah, so Murph, David Murphy, North Star. Um, and Murph, the car is in use. And so that's the hood of his first car. Awesome. Every wine has a story, and that's how you sell <laughs> wine. You got to be a storyteller. And Holly's <laughs> one of the best storytellers. This is the cold room, Doug? Yeah. Okay, it feels colder. <laughs> Luke Belair, guys. Oh, Luke Belair. Yeah. And this, these are the light-up bottles. These are, like, these are very yeah. coveted, hard to get. You get them at casewinelife.com. Very popular. All you Ricky Rose, Gucci Mane fans, we got you. <laughs> I'm a wet, I'm a wet. The, uh, the facility here is a greener facility. As you can see, we have insulation on all the walls, so that helps keep our energy usage down. We also replaced all of our lighting with LED lighting. And you notice they're all um, motion activated, so that when you walk through, it lights up. This is our um, hand stack aisle. Which... Yep, there you go. Good stuff. It's high noon. <laughs> <laughs> too easy. Too easy. Now I'm not quite clear what it's quite a high noon okay. sitting right there. Put this in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm, I, I'm very goofy. Sorry. I'm just so stoked. Wow. Uh, the, uh, the yes. And we've got Perry Jouette Bella Pop. Wow. Good stuff. Wine in boxes. But uh, I've never seen a Malbec package like this. Oh, here's the yellow. That's what Sore subject. Sore <laughs> subject. Okay. Well, very nice packaging for this Malbec. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, yeah. Terrazas. Terrazas. So that's, that's a, a that's stocking a stuffer. Yeah, that's a story. So Bordeaux winemaker comes to Argentina. You know, Bordeaux winemaker store, comes to Argentina. Wow. Oh, Artemis. Yeah. Is that Artemis? Yes. Artemis. Yes, Stag's Leap. Stag's Leap. Yes, yes, yeah. The wine that put California on the map mm -hmm. right there um, what, 30, 40 years ago. The, the Judgment of Paris. Yes. <laughs> we will never forget. Cedarburg, a new brand. Cedarburg from South Africa. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Wow, great. Great wines with altitude. Nickel and nickel. Nickel and nickel. <laughs> Another one of our favorites. Richard, can you explain, like, so if there's orders come back here, they obviously don't go to the that line. So how does, how does a guy get something that's the third row from the top up there? A really tall the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so um, when the orders are sent down from the system, the stuff that's stored in the cold room are set out in what's by wave. So Say you, you want to pick for the first three waves, you want to go out and do a circle around the warehouse of this odd stuff, or the stuff that's not sold in a velocity to where it would go into one of the pick modules. They would then drive around on a cherry picker and would go through and stack a pallet of, you know, say, uh, probably 28 
approximately cases. And they would take that down to the case line, which we haven't seen yet. We'll verify that later. And then they would load it onto the conveyor system at that location. Then it would travel around back down to the trucks. So. Thank you, Richard. On wow. a cherry picker. I mean, this, 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 way, it's, just, it, it, it's, it's just a head snapper of a day, guys. <laughs> five uh, five. We also sell beer. Do they also sell? Yes, you do sell beer. A lot yeah. Of German, yeah. Beer. We have a lot of uh, like the nickel and nickel and farniente and farniente. That post and beam has been fantastic this year. Oh, um, great that, it's product! Been rocking. I mean, we've, yeah. It, yeah. And, I need to do more with post and beam. And it happens to be delicious. <laughs> okay. Uh, Contraire, very popular. And you guys just picked up Coppola, correct? Uh, no. Or have you, or have you always had Coppola? Always had Coppola. You've always the, had Coppola. The supplier changed up. Yeah. Correct. Uh, yeah. Delicato yeah. purchased it from. Uh, directly from Coppola. From Mr. Coppola, yes. Angle note. Does the consolidation? Does that like get? I don't know. Does that? Is that? You think it's good for the wine industry, Doug? All the consolidation. Good for it. I, I, know, I think it, it, just, it, it just makes it different. That, uh, you know, with a, for, from our position, once it's with a different supplier, like let's say it's Delicato, even before with an independent supplier, um, you know, it's a, with a different wholesaler up in Northern Virginia. So does ultimately that change if the, if the supplier wants that brand to come to us? So is there a little more effort put into into consolidating? But you know, it's right right now, technically, with something like Coppola, it wasn't consolidated, it just changed hands or changed ownership. So I think there's going to be a lot more of that coming in California as smaller wineries or mid-sized wineries can't exist on their own. They're either going to have to become, uh, become part of a group or they're going to have to go out and, uh, and sell. So. Interesting, interesting. If we didn't have our corporate relations with... Um for freight and things of that nature, we'd have a lot more difficulty getting product here. Yes, freight, drivers, are you, you guys are still hiring, right? We are hiring. Yeah. R&DC is a top 10 place to work, guys. Putting America to work, apply, just go online. They need drivers, they need reps. Warehouse crew. Warehouse crew, anything, I'm signing up. I'm gonna work part time here. <laughs> this is awesome. This is an awesome job. Okay, we need to do this. This is this would be an awesome job if they hire me. If they <laughs> I won't be working in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I want to work with the nickel and nickel. Yeah, <laughs> Donna Fagata. <laughs> now, does RDC have any of their own labels? We do not. You do not? No, You're not do, in the. We do, we do some private labels for large uh, grocers or Costco or whatever, but those are, con are, are done by our suppliers. We do not... Why, why bite the hand that feeds you? Well, well th I think that's it. I mean, I think that we could be wildly successful with our own brands, but that really, it hasn't been broached, I mean, be, whether it's like Southern or Breakthrough or us or any of the big wholesalers. Some of the smaller ones have gone out and done their own brands, but uh, it, yeah, it's, uh, it, I, I think it's, it's exactly a by the hand that feeds type of situation. Respect that. Respect that a lot. Lock and barrel. Keg wine. Keg wine. A keg wine's a big deal. By the tap recently. Keg wine. Lots of it. Joel Gott. Jacobs Creek. Some beer down here. Number one Pinot Grigio in the world. Yeah, about that. About that. <laughs> Santa Margarita, guys. That's a whole lot of Santa Margarita. That's a whole palette. <laughs> Very popular. There's another palette up there. Very popular with all the real housewives. We got another palette up there for all the real housewives. CaseWineLife.com. There you go. Insignia. Look, and they even left me one bottle. They even left me one. That's so kind of you, Richard. There you go. Richard, you give him the 
the box. Can... Oh, that, that, yeah, exactly. Okay, just, I'll, I'll take the box. Take the, box. <laughs> the insignia, Joseph Phelps. Special, very special wine. <laughs> this is yeah, the, 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 yeah, no giving, no gifting, but this is delicious with pizza, the essential red. It really, and I think it was made for pizza. Oh, wow. <laughs> because they were handing out these Italian uh, biking hats when it first, <laughs> do you remember that when it was first introduced? I don't know what the connection was, but it, wow, this is a wine you gotta have with pizza. I love the essential red, I mean, the, the uh, uh, old vine Zinfandel. The old, old vine, yeah. yeah. That's a really nice wine. Can wine, did you guys ever, did you see this guy's coming? Did you guys, uh, uh, did we, you see we, we this saw trend? It coming. Yeah, we saw it coming, and we saw it leaving. Re oh, you saw <laughs> so where is it at now? Yeah, don't, uh, don't. <laughs> where is it at now? Is it kind of, has it's, it plateaued? It's, yeah, it, it's right in the middle. It's now solid. And it's, it's more uh, seasonal, too. It'll pick up again with yeah. the Well, there, it's like the, the, the piece of the pie is pretty good size, but there's so many competitors, mm -hmm. not just like our suppliers, but every supplier. It's like how Rosé was about eight years yeah. ago. You know, the, the first, 10 years ago, there was like, 10 rosés, and then like at three years later, we had, uh, I think it was 130 rosés from different suppliers. So, and we're just one wholesaler. So, you know, in the state, there's probably are five or 600 different rosés available. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's the same thing with canned wines. And everybody's kind of just hoping to, to hit a home run. Hit a niche. Them. You know? Yeah. I can't believe you said at one time there were only 10 rosés on the market. Okay. And now today, it's like the whole aisle is rosé. <laughs> And that's a rosé. Yeah. Wine on tap. About, about one month ago, you wouldn't have seen a keg wine in this building. It's, that's a, something that's the shortage uh, and supply of kegs and replacement kegs has been awful. And now we, we actually finally have gotten some in within the last 30 days. But for really throughout late summer, zero kegs. We had nothing. Another trend that I didn't see. Yeah, that one's actually going pretty well. Yeah. And grow. Okay. Is that a clear keg? <laughs> technically a disposable yeah. keg for first yeah. Wow. Well, well. mm -hmm. How you doing? Get out of your way. <laughs> there we go, some more cake bread. More cake bread, more Barbersville up there. Unit keg, cakes that connect. This is this is very patriotic. <laughs> Some MD, the college days. It's terrible. It's a sparkling made in Colorado. <laughs> very patriotic. Yeah. <laughs> there, anytime you go this location. Okay. Well, let me go walk back to this one. Oh, okay. This is all the point of sale. Yeah, point of perfect. sale? Yeah. Yep. That I love, but you guys are very limited in what you can share. Yeah. Hey, Louie. Hello. We're going to slip by you here. Thank you. I'll give you my address, hey. okay? All right. Thank you. Good, good. I'm going to text you my address, buddy, we right now. The traffic jam. So you saw how the bottle room, the conveyors go down, you put the cases on the bottom, they actually go upstairs. In the fast lane, it has accumulation, it goes up and goes all the way back to the end of the module, then back forward, then, then uh, curves over and goes to the merge. The slow side has a much shorter accumulation because it's less than 20% of the bottles, and then it also goes to the merge. The case lines, we have four case lines. And because they're a farther distance away, they don't have to circle back and forth. They just come straight down and go to the merge. Um, the merge is located on top of this mezzanine. And then as you release by wave, like we talked about, because you're loading multiple trucks at the same time. You're basically having a consolidation of all your pick modules into one line and then it separates back out and it goes down to one of six trucks. 
That's an optical sorter. sorter in doing that. So it's going to scan the label. Meanwhile, on the um, at the sorter, you have a, a multiple scanners that actually look at the box and comparing the box to hopefully identify any discrepancy with what was supposed to be pulled versus what was actually pulled. So it helps to improve your accuracy. Our scanners have an accuracy of above 99%, so hopefully you're catching most of the errors. Um, after that, they go down to the trucks, and the trucks are, um, we have extendables. I don't know if that's of any interest to you, but the extendables will actually go out as far as a 53-foot trailer, so if we're loading an extremely large truck, we can load that. And obviously, it's um, you know mechanically can be pulled back into a shorter truck as well. The expendable is like an airport ramp. Oh, we can show. These are the two case pick mods. The upstairs is exclusively uh, pallet flow. The downstairs, a combination, primarily uh, case flow, but also has a small amount of pallet flow. So this is kind of like staging. Um, this, this is bulk storage here. A little bit over there, you have um, the receiving area where product is brought in. And a little bit beyond that is you'll have club staging. If you see the uh, stickers, that will indicate club staging and say what club that is going to. And for those types of mortars, we shrink wrap them through the shrink wrap machine and we give them greater stability as we're sending them out to the accounts. As you can see, this is a compound, um, has multiple layers, and it literally will go out 53 feet. And we have it to where it, um, It takes the light in with it so that the loader can actually see what's what's in the truck. It has great visibility, plus during the summer, it has a fan to keep it cooler in the truck for the operator. It gives information to the loader, how high they need to stack it in the truck, how many cases they're expecting, where they are in the load. Check how technical this is, guys. Wow. Total cases, 391. Just today at 5.30 in the morning. Wow, I was sleeping. Right. <laughs> I was sleeping, Doug. <laughs> it's all sorted, and so then it comes down. So this is an individual ramp. So all, how many trucks are loaded at a single time, Richard? You load six trucks at a time. So the, these are all full. I mean, like there's just tons of people down here mm -hmm. working, like uh, unloading these boxes as they come down into the into the truck. Now know? I know why we did this at 10 a.m. We didn't want to be in the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Massive undertaking, well, and, guys. And, uh, and you you can't believe how loud it is in here at nighttime too. Everybody has to wear ear protection. It's like a or should wear your protection. Well, this is a, actually a quieter conveyor than a, our older conveyor. So our older conveyor, you could, you found it difficult to talk. Yeah. Uh, this is a much better conveyor than our uh, it's still old Max system, but lot there's a lot of moving parts. Then you have the beeping of more lifts going around. So it, it, it is a... It's a working warehouse. <laughs> it's a working warehouse. It's, it's a working warehouse. It truly is, truly a marvel of a, of a warehouse, guys. Um, Wow. We didn't know what to expect, guys. You better smash that like button. Another epic episode thanks to Holly and our friends of R&DC. These are like sales, where your sales teams? Um, these are meeting rooms. We have okay. a, um, actually do have a tasting room here to the right. Oh, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> where we do our statewide meetings over here. These rooms. These these, rooms. The bare knuckle meetings? Meeting and tasting rooms. <laughs> wow, beautiful. Look at all the woodwork. Of course, unfortunately, there's no wine in them. <laughs> there was enough wine in that warehouse. <laughs> but if you wanted a tasting room, this would be an awesome tasting room, guys. All this woodwork, look at the stone, beautiful. Maybe there's some wine in here. Nope. <laughs> no luck. <laughs> the States, what, who, what is this? Oh, Master. Master, master mixes. mixes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Cocktail mixes. Sorry, I'm snooping. Okay. <laughs>
We are in the point of sale room. So these are called shelf talkers. These help us sell wine. You could mail this in to get two bucks off. We love point of sale. Um, whatever it takes, it all helps to sell wine. And um, th this is all provided by the suppliers to the distributor. Um, like this awesome Rufino sign from our friends at Constellation. This would be super cool. Like I could really load that with product. Um, it's not, it's plastic. It's all plastic. I'm thinking Alban Road. I could really load that with product, right? That would be cool. An awesome day today here at RNDC. I'm so excited. What did we get? We got some point of sale items, like things like printed materials to help us sell wine, which is really cool. It's gonna do a lot, but now we learn more about the logistics of selling wine and the distribution. Don't miss this episode. Like, comment, subscribe.